What's going on guys? In this video I want to talk about um, some drastic differences between a boxing hook and a Muay Thai hook. So the question might become which one is better in the sense that which one would be more effective. The way these hooks and uppercuts are thrown um, are very effective in their own right in their specific martial art or combat sport. Now there are do's and don'ts for specific reasons but at the end I'll, I'll try to uh, break down like what I prefer and why. So, whether it's the Muay Thai hook or uppercut, or a boxing hook or uppercut, they start the same way. All of them start from the ground up. I tell my students and I tell my clients, your punches come from the earth. It's because we have to generate power from our legs. That power goes through our legs, up to our hips, from our hips through our core, core rotation, you're pulling, and then up through the shoulder, through the shoulder, into the fist. The biggest sin or mistake you can make is just throwing shoulder punches. That said, there are times that the Muay Thai punches can look like shoulder punches because they snap and we don't have as much rotation um, as boxers. So let's show the difference between the hooks. So a boxing hook has a lot of rotation, okay? There's rotation from the setup and then when you land the hook, there's serious rotation on the lead hip, lead leg. And that's to generate enough power to swing the hook through. Makes sense, okay? So I'm here. So hip rotation, and then full hip rotation on the lead hand for a boxing hook. Now Muay Thai, we are kind of told not to turn this lead hip too much, or at all really. In Muay Thai and kickboxing, it's a slight hip like thrust, but you don't turn the leg. There are reasons for that. We don't turn the leg because we don't like exposing the backside of our leg uh, for a return kick. That's the, one of the primary reasons. And you just don't stay balanced. For a boxing hook, see how my weight has to load, okay? And we don't like to be too heavy down into our legs. We want to stand taller so we can extend our punches. And everything needs to be long. We can't be this close. If we're that close in Muay Thai, there's a clinch and there's elbows. Kickboxing, that's not so much of a threat. There are still clinches in kickboxing. So, but you'll see a lot more tight hooks in kickboxing so they have more of a boxing style of hook. But, they don't turn that leg because again, it exposes the leg. And also, the rotation, turning that leg, it's harder to get that leg back to check a kick or to react to a kick that's coming, you see? So if I turn this leg and someone counters with a leg kick, then it's a weird kind of way to defend to kind of either get it out of the way and I can't check it effectively. So we like to keep our, our hips forward when we throw our hook so that we can still defend, or we can move it out of the way, or you follow with the kick. All that becomes a little more difficult when my lead hip is fully rotated. So Thai style of like uppercut and hook is very long, okay? Kind of like this. And again, that's to keep me further away from the dangers of elbows, and clinches, right? So I'm very long, boom, we pop our hip, but there's no over rotation, right? Like you'll see some uh, famous kickboxers when they're doing their punch combos, there's not, it just looks like shoulder punches, but they've learned to generate enough torque through their core on their hip to generate a lot of power into their hooks without the needed rotation of the leg. So the hip rotation from my legs through my hips and my core is uh, a lot less robust. So 
So which one is better? They are not better than each other. They are both effective in the styles of fighting that they are applied. Boxing, that style of hook is extremely effective and it makes sense, okay? Boxers can get low, right? And they can generate the necessary torque in their hips, through their legs, uh, to land the hooks that way. They don't have to worry about kicks. High stylish and kickboxers, okay? They learn to generate a decent snap and power uh, through that little torque, the, the minimal torque in comparison to boxing. But it's still just, it's still very powerful. They're still pushing off the ground. There's still a torque and you're pushing, right? But what they're doing is usually setting up a kick, especially this is like such a classic Muay Thai and kickboxing combo is a hook to a kick, ultimately because you're hitting that top person towards the kick, right? Hmm. So if you notice the way I throw my hook with my kicks though, I do throw a boxing style hook. I rotate. I did have a coach one time who tried to, to get me to break that and I'm capable. There's times I don't. That's if I'm just throwing like a slapping hook, right? Or what, what uh, my boxing coach called European style or just palm down, right? I don't generate as much because I know there's a kick behind it, but if I'm close or if I want to generate a lot of power, boom. And I've done it for so long that I can spin and get my kick going. Same with my defense, boom. Once I'm here, I just rotate in the air. It's just how I prefer to throw tight hooks, tight uppercuts, or a Western style hook or beer mug, palm in, uh, power hook. And that's from just a lot of boxing myself and finding comfort and benefit to that style of, of, of uh, throwing a hook and then bringing it into my Muay Thai, my kickboxing. But I'm able to switch, okay, there's times, there's times, very long, okay? And then there's times, very close. <gasps> and I can still generate or move and get my kicks behind my combos. So, if you're learning Muay Thai, you should always learn the proper style of or techniques for the style that you're training. If you're boxing, same thing, but if you're mixing things or you're trying a bunch of them, it would be of great benefit to try to mix them together a little bit, but mix them in an effective way. Don't be that guy who wants to do Muay Thai and kickboxing, but does that boxing stance is low and eats leg kicks and you're trying to land punches. Be a shapeshifter, right? That's what I call it. I can, I can stand tall, fight this way. I can switch to a boxing style when necessary. And then I can go back. But you have to practice all those things. You won't know which one you prefer until you try them both. And really give them both a chance. Okay guys. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Man, please be sure to like and subscribe. Show us some love. And we'll be sure to keep making content. I'll see you guys in the next video.